Another text question is, says, if all religions claim to be truth, then how can Christianity make that claim and think that it is correct? Appreciate that question, <clears throat> and it's a question that has the assumption that is very correct. Oftentimes, the Christian takes the hit that he or she was a follower of Jesus Christ is the only one who lays claim to exclusivity. That is not true. <clears throat> Gautama Buddha was born a Hindu, and he renounced two of the fundamental doctrines of Hinduism, the authority of the Vedas and uh, the caste system. He could not accept those two, went on his own journey in search of enlightenment, and came, of course, with the uh, Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path and the ultimate extinguishing of desire in his nirvanic pursuit. So he turned his belief away from the religion of his birth in order to find a different answer. <clears throat> Islam is also exclusivistic in its claim, uh, in all of its precepts and its five pillars and so on. What about these contradistinctions? The first thing we need to know is there are distinctions, there are fundamental differences. At best, there are superficial similarities. <clears throat> I often hear the question posed wrongly. They'll say, are all religion, aren't all religions fundamentally the same and superficially different? No, they are fundamentally different and at best they are superficially similar. What are the fundamental claims, for example? In Buddhism, the goal is to ex extinguish hunger, extinguish desire. I remember talking to the first woman monk who was from Thailand to be ordained into the Buddhist priesthood. But Thai Buddhists do not ordain women, so she went to Sri Lanka to be ordained, and she has a PhD in philosophy from McMaster University in Hamilton, uh, Ontario. And uh, Waterloo, I guess, Ontario, McMaster University there. Got her PhD in philosophy, and she gave me the first interview. We chatted for well over an hour, one-on-one, -on -one, and I, sort of angled into some questions because I didn't want to be too discourteous. And one of the things I said to her is, I hear you're married. And she said, yes. I said, you have children? She said, yes. I said, but you're living in a temple by yourself? She said, yes. I said, do you not see your children? She started crying. She said, I have a car. I said, you have a car? She said, yeah. I said, okay. So she drove herself because she can't allow uh, a man to drive her, she said, so she has to drive herself. And she says, every evening at the end of the day, I try and meet up with one of my children. She said, this is the hardest part of my life. I said, so you are on the journey to extinguishing the desire to be with your children. Is that right? Is that a fair assessment? She kept quiet. And then I said this. I said, the Dalai Lama has as his primary pursuit now the freedom of Tibet. She said, that's right. I said, why does he desire that? She looked at me and she said, we try not to get into these philosophical questions. Let's just say that he chooses to. You take a look at other world religions <clears throat> and see where these four questions are dealt with. Origin, meaning, morality and destiny. These four questions have to be answered in two ways. Follow me, please. Every particular answer has to correspond to truth, either through empirical form of measurement or through the logical reasoning process. And when those four answers are put together, they must cohere and not be incoherent. So the two tests, correspondence and coherence, I guarantee you only in the Judeo-Christian worldview, will you find these four questions answered with corresponding truthfulness and with the coherence of a worldview? Let me take just one example, and I don't say this to slight, but this is a fact, and we have to deal with it. I've been invited in many, many Islamic countries, and I have open forums there, and I'm going to go to one of the toughest Islamic countries within the next few weeks. They've hosted me in many parts there, and we've had dialogues. I want to give to you two things. In the Quran, it is the only historically claimed document 
that denies that Jesus Christ was actually crucified or died on the cross. Denies that. The Greek historians say he died on the cross. Roman historians say that. Pagan historians say that. Jewish historians say that. And Christian historians say that. The Islamic, uh, the, the Quran is the only one that says it appeared to him that he died, but he didn't actually die on the cross. So historically, it is making an affirmation that is really historically untrue. I got into a discussion with Sheikh Hussein of the leading Shiite cleric in Damascus, Syria, a real gentleman. For over three hours, we talked with an interpreter between us and an audience listening in. I was allowed to ask him one question about his faith, and he was allowed to ask me one question about mine. There was nothing, no rancor, no adversarial stance, just a perspective and counter perspective and back and forth. It's the best way to do it, really. At the end of it, Sheikh Hussein looked at me. He was very respectful through the whole time, always referred to me as Professor, Professor Zacharias, Professor Zacharias. And then at the end, he looked at me, leaned over, and he said, you know, Professor, I think the time has come for us in the Islamic world to stop asking if Jesus Christ died and to start asking why. I said to him, may I quote you on that, sir? He said, yes, you may. I'm, I'm hopefully going to go there before long and I hope we can meet up again. Origin, meaning, morality, and destiny. The Judeo-Christian worldview is not the only one that claims exclusivity, but it's the only one that takes those four questions with corresponding answers that are truthful and coherent answers that stand the test of time. And the ultimate answer of the resurrection from the dead that gives you hope and meaning. I see we have one more question left, and uh, that's the sign here. I'll be happy to take that. I just want to add something to that very, very quickly, because the question comes also in, in this, in this uh, question. Have you studied all the religions in the world in order for you to know that your religion is right? Could, could it not be possible that you have missed something? Now, that sounds like a, a very daunting question, but it's really not that difficult to deal with, because all the worldviews in existence, all the worldviews that exist can actually be grouped at the very basic level. Are, you could spend um, it, uh, an eternity maybe studying just one of these uh, religions. But all the worldviews in existence can be grouped under only three categories, all the worldviews. The first category is the view that only the universe exists. The other category is only God exists. Of course, you find naturalism and atheism on the, on, on the left side, only the universe exists. But when uh, you know, the, most, some Eastern religions will tell you only God exists, and that's cashed out in different ways. I'm just using the name, the word God, just to make it easy for us to grasp this concept. Then in the middle, you have the view that both God and the universe exist. Both God and the universe exist, and under that you have Judaism, Christianity, and, uh, and Islam. So it's not difficult to apply the test that Ravi was talking about to these systems uh, uh, as a whole without having to study each particular one. You just need to know what the basic ideas, what the basic uh, thoughts are for these views, and then you can critique all of them without having to be an expert in every worldview that's out there. So it's important for us to know that it's, it's not, it's, this is not, uh, so difficult to do. We are not making it up in trying to come up with an answer to this kind of a question. This gentleman, very humble guy, and I, we didn't want to give another university too much of advertising here lest we be thrown out, but he is just finishing up his PhD work at the University of Georgia, and I'm going to carry the work out there. So. All right, we do have time for one more question. I'm sorry for those of you who have been standing so long in line, but uh, we need to move on. But let me invite you to come to the uh, tables out front afterwards uh, to continue the conversation.